Hello and welcome. In this video, we will show how you can perform a one sample z test using Excel. A z test is a statistical tool in hypothesis testing to test the mean of a distribution when the variances are known or the sample size is large. Generally, we can speak of a large sample in these kind of settings when the sample size m is larger than or equal to 30. Under the null hypothesis, the test statistic is approximately normally distributed. On this sheet we have 30 observations of the average resting heart rate of athletes. We know that the normal resting heart rate for adults ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. We know that an athlete often has a lower heart rate. What we will investigate here is whether or not the athlete's average heart rate is significantly smaller than 60, which represents the lower end of the normal heart rate range. To test this, we state our null hypothesis H0 as the average heart rate of the athletes stated by mu athletes strictly higher than 60. The alternative hypothesis is then mu athletes is smaller than or equal to 60. Remark that we also created a column for the hypothesized value in our data table. We will use this later on in the video when we actually perform the test. Before we can perform the test, we need to know the population variance of the average heart rate of our athletes. Since we have independent and identically distributed observations, we know that the sample variance converges to the population variance. So when our sample is large enough, and this is the case when we have 30 observations or more, as indicated in the introduction, we can substitute the sample variance for the population variance. Hence, we first compute the sample variance. This can be done by using the function var.s, which computes the sample variance of a given range. We want to compute the sample variance of the heart rates of the athletes. So we enter the range A3 till A52. Now we are ready to do the z-test. We navigate to data and select data analysis. Menu opens where we scroll down to z-test to sample for means. We select this and press OK. Here we have to enter both variable ranges. Variable 1 is the average heart rate of the athletes in range A3 till A52. As a second variable, we will insert the hypothesized value in cell B3. To fill in the hypothesized mean difference, we have to look at the null hypothesis. We assume that the mean is 60, which is the same as saying that the difference between the mean and the hypothesized value is 0. We just computed the variance of the variable. This is 104. We also need the variance for our second variable. As 60 is the exact value for the second variable, the variance should be 0. However, Excel won't allow us to enter this value. To circumvent this shortcoming, we will enter the very small number 1e-99. We did not include the labels in our variable ranges, so we keep this box unchecked. Next we have to enter the level of confidence for our test. This is automatically set to 0 0.05, which corresponds to a 95% confidence level. This is a commonly used level, so we keep this. Finally, we choose where the output of the z-test should appear. We put it on the same sheet in cell D11. The first half of the output table summarizes the variables. We see the means, the variances, and number of observations. Next, we see the hypothesized mean difference, the value of the test statistic C, and the p-value and critical z-value for a one-tailed and two-tailed test. The difference between a one- and a two-tailed test is shown in the graphs next to the table. A one-tailed test is where you are only interested in one direction. If a mean is x, you might want to know if a set of results is more than x or less than x. In one tail test, we therefore reject the null hypothesis when the test statistics value is higher than the critical z value, or rather lower than the critical value depending on what you are interested in. In a two tail test, we look at both ends of the distribution, and we will reject the null when that test statistics value is smaller than the lower z value or higher than the upper z value. In this case, we are interested in a one tail test as we want to test if the average heart rate is significantly smaller than 60. Remark that the yellow area covers 5% and each blue area covers 2.5% to sum up to 5 in total. We observe that the test statistics value is lower than the one-tail critical z-value, 
So we can conclude that the average heart rate of athletes is significantly lower than 60. Another way to conclude this is by making use of the p-value. The p-value for the one-tailed test is 4 to the power minus 12. This value is smaller than our confidence level of 0 0.05, so we can conclude to reject the null hypothesis. This concludes our video on one sample z-test in Excel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software-related tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.